Hi friends, great to see you. Will Davis Jr. here with your good news today. Thanks for joining in. Obviously, please send cards, comments, questions, and complaints to Senior Pastor, SR Pastor, at acfellowship.org. All right, let's talk about this tree one more day. Genesis 2.15, actually verse 16, the Lord God commanded the man saying, you may surely eat of every tree in the garden. We talked about this last week. The word is yes, please eat from the trees. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. That just sounds harsh. Like, what you know, is it a tree in a garden that you're supposed to stay away from? And if you eat it, it's, it's a one and done. And I talked yesterday a bit about why the tree was there in the first place. That if God didn't want us to eat from the tree, why would he put it there? And there's two reasons, and I'm going to let you go back to yesterday and listen to him. Or, excuse me, Friday. You will surely die. So, if you read ahead to chapter 3, Adam and Eve eat of the fruit, and they don't die. In fact, they live, they live according to scriptures, hundreds of years after that, and have bunches of children. So what happened? What was God talking about? The, the, death, the death to which God referred was not initially physical. It was physical. Um, the the decay of the body, the aging process that we see, and diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and cancer and all the horrible things are a result of what happened in Genesis chapter 3 when Adam and Eve ate this fruit. But it took centuries for that effect to be clearly known. Um, the physical death took a while to really show up on the scene in a prominent way. And it really is after the flood that lifespans get dramatically shortened from the hundreds of years people lived back then. The death to which God refers here is spiritual. Remember, we are a, a trichotomy. And this is taught in what we saw in Genesis chapter 1, the early part of Genesis chapter 2. We are body, soul, and spirit. Um, plants have a body. Okay, plants have a body. Animals have a body and a soul that can reason and process and, and feel and emote. Only humans have a spirit, which is why we're made in God's image. And the spirit is what's eternal in us, and it is the spirit that died. You were dead in your trespasses and sins, Ephesians 2, verse 1. Well, they weren't dead. They were very much alive, but their spirits were dead. The weight of that knowledge of good and evil crushed our spirits. We were not meant to know it. We were not meant to be exposed to it, and it crushed our spirits. It killed us spiritually. So every man is born two-thirds alive and one-third dead. Every human. Physical, emotional, volitional, soul's alive, body's alive, spirit's dead. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, you've got to be born again. you got to be born spiritually. You're walking around two-thirds alive. The part that's most important to you isn't alive yet. You need to be born again. Born from heaven, born of the Spirit, he talked about. So when, when Adam and Eve sinned, the, the curse of sin ultimately killed the spiritual side of humans, which was the most important side. It's a side that enables us to live eternally with God. It's a side that's made in his image. That's what Satan went after because he knows that's what's most important in humans. Our consciousness is great. Our body's great. Those are not as significant as our spirit because it's made in the image of God. And so that death was immediate because what did Adam and Eve do? We'll talk about it in Genesis 3 when we get there. What did Adam and Eve do when they ate of the fruit? They felt ashamed. They lost their innocence and they covered up and they hid from God. One of the saddest verses, maybe the saddest verse in all the Bible, they hid from God. Whereas just the day before, they've been enjoying his presence, they hid from him and lost their innocence. That's what spiritual death looks like. And it's what happened when sin entered the world. So what Jesus did at God's command is he came along, died for sins, rose again, and breathes into us us the new breath of life, the, the breath of new life, a new existence, of being a new creation. He restores our spirits, resuscitates our spirits. Ephesians 2, 1, you're dead in your trespasses and sins. Verse 4, give or take of Ephesians 2, but you've been made alive in Christ. Hmm. That's what he does. Spiritual death is a real thing. The mission of the church is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the world. So that men, women, and boys and girls who are born spiritually dead might have the chance to have life. And that eternal life. 
that he offers in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for teaching us about the difference between spiritual death and physical death. And thank you for redeeming us from both. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow.